Oh my goodness, what a way to start a video about eyes and catch lights. Look at those eyes. Wow. So here we are in the bridge and here's our image. I'm going to open it. And as Photoshop opens with all these names of all these people, why don't you join me as we take a journey into step two, which is the catch light. And we're also going to go over the retouch because we always go over the retouch. So here we go. Okay, so this is where we left off. We have the image open and we're ready to start part two, which is the catch light. To just review part one, part one was retouching the eyes to get ready to paint on it. And if you come over here and you see my layers, we put the layers on in part one. This was the retouch layer we worked on. If I turn the eye off, I'm going to zoom out so you can see the entire face. I'm going to click it off. That's what the eye looked like before. I'm going to click it on. Now, when we did some burning and dodging in the other video, I'm going to review that because sometimes when I go in here and look at what I've done, sometimes I think I need a little bit more. And it's always better to do more later on, especially on a layer like this. Later on, you'll see when we do the empty layers, you can go as hard on the brush as you want because you're going to play with the opacity. Well, we'll get to that. But for this, you don't want to go too hard too fast because you, it's very hard to reverse it, even if you start undoing history layers. By the time you've noticed that maybe you're, you're a little heavy-handed, and also I have, my, I have my cursor highlighted so you can see where it is, and maybe I should take that off. But you can see I have the burn tool. And I'm just burning a little bit more of that shadow under the eye and on the lids. And you can see the difference when I turn it on and off. That's when you can really see. You can you probably could see the difference if I do it in here as well. If I do a little burning right here under his lash line. And you see that when I turn it on and off. Right here. If you watch when I turn it on and off, keep your eye right there. You can see that subtle difference with the burn. I'm just going to burn pupil a little bit more and now I'm going to go around the iris one last time so I usually find that I need to do a little bit more burning when I come back in not necessarily dodging but sometimes a little bit more burning and even as I start to paint I might go back and see there my hand was ah see there my hand was a little uneven right here watch right here you're going to see the the difference with the burn there it is, but I'm going to go back because my hand wobbled a little bit. This is why we have our history. Let's see if I did that this time. Ah, I did do it this time. So this is why we have our history palette right here available. We can see right there where I went awry. And make the point a little smaller, two little smaller strokes so I don't mess up this time. Not going to take the mistake out because I want to show you that nothing is a mistake. You don't have to start again, even though this, this, this particular lay is really hard to do. And now you can definitely see the difference where it's been dodged and burned. And in retrospect, I am actually going to do a little bit more dodging in a few places that I see. And usually I make the dodge tool about the size of the iris and I'm going to tap it right there. Let's see if that did anything. You see that? I made that little, this little orange glow right here. So I'm going to do that same thing on this side where I don't see that little orange glow. Now watch, I'm going to turn it on and off. There it is. So now I think that's adequate burning and dodging. And we're going to move on to the catch light. And I always suggest to save every time you move on to another step. Because you never know when your program is going to crash. Believe me. These programs use a lot of memory and a lot of RAM. And even if you have the most RAM I could get in the desktop and my computer still crashes. So let's go on to the catch light. And what is the catch light? The catch light, uh, the catch light is the reflection in the eye of the source of the light. 
Now, just what it says, catch the light. It's where the eye catches the light that's coming into it. Now, I'm going to zoom out because I want you to see how important a catch light is. This child now has no light in their eyes. And something I say about the catch light, and I tell this to my art students and also to my photography students, the catch light will tell you the story. If you want to analyze your lighting and why you got the effects that you got, why do the shadows look a certain way on the face, or even when you're drawing, why does the eye look a certain way, maybe the eyes look cross-eyed, the catch lights are always tell the story of the eye. So if we take this layer off and analyze, I did have a fill light on in this image. There was a little tiny pin prick of a light right here in both pupils. And then this was my six foot octagon that I used as a large main. And that's a pretty catch light. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem is if you're doing a painted image, paintings tend to be softer. They tend to not be as hard especially traditional paintings. Photorealism wasn't really a big thing. Well, it was a big thing in some areas. And then when we hit Impressionism, styles changed. But generally, if you're trying to model a Rembrandt style painting, the catch lights are usually more soft. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to turn back on this retouch layer because we're going to forget about the original. And we're going to go to catch light one. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your brush. And this time, instead of picking pressure, opacity, and flow, which you know is my favorite brush, this time we're just going to pick soft round pressure opacity. And the reason is, is because flow is dependent. Opacity is dependent on your hand pressure. Flow is dependent on your hand pressure. And I'm going to rotate the sides of the brush. What I want to do, I'm trying to, want, let's close this. Maybe then it'll rotate. Brush sides, rotate. Yes. Okay. So I want to pick a brush, probably a little bit bigger than the catch light I want, and probably around the size of the catch light I want to make. And in an image like this, I would say 30 points is probably more accurate. The points depend on the size of the image. That's why I can't tell you the definite points of the brush to pick. Soft, round, pressure, opacity brush. This particular brush, we're doing it with 30 points. We're leaving the opacity and the flow at 100, but the brush is pressure soft round pressure opacity and you're taking a straight white brush right here in the color picker it should be on the top the white find your spot and you're just gonna hit one that's number one two and when you hit it I want you to twist your brush a little bit so it's like one like that two like that now you may say, I can't get them exactly the same size like you can, and that's okay too. You don't have to do them by hand like I'm doing. I'm gonna pull out because I wanna see, we're gonna do two catch lights, and we wanna make sure we're on the right layer. This is the catch light off, this is the catch light on. Reason we wanna see if we're on the right layer is we're gonna start playing with the opacity of this layer, and usually we go down to 60%, and then we start playing with the fill, and usually we go down to about 60% on that first. And then we do catch light number two. But honestly, I'm not too happy with catch light number one. Considering that the catch lights in his original eyes were so big, while those are cute and pretty, they're just a little tiny bit too small for the lighting pattern that's on his face. It's just not going to look right. So I'm going to go back in my history palette, make life very easy for me, and go past. Let's see where I started with the brush tool. I started with the brush tool here. Okay, and that's how easily you can go and start again. I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to take the shadow off the cursor. I think you're going to be able to see where my cursor is. I think it'll be make it easier for me to see where I'm putting the catch light, and I'll be right back. So here we are. Now I could see better. I'm going to shut this layer off and I'm going to look at the original catch light. If I click on that layer, maybe I will size for this particular image, I will size my brush to 40, about the size of the original catch light. Now the catch light's still not going to be as big and we don't want to play the drinking game in this video. So make sure you're on catch light one. And we start now with catch light one and we just hit it on each side one two and usually how i measure is i take this brush i put it against the lash line i put it against the line around the 
iris and I make it dip a little bit into the pupil and then I hit it number two go on to this side another way to make your edge a little softer is give your brush a little twist when you press down so you're just going to press down make sure your brush is in the similar spot and twirl i'm going to pull out so you can see all right that's a little bit better that they're a little bit bigger i like that we're going to stick with that i don't think i want to make them bigger than that but we're going to do one more okay make sure you're on the right layer i'm just going to make my circle a little bigger and a little softer so what i do is i start in the middle of it and i and i swirl around and what that did you see is it gave me a nice soft white edge around the last one and now we're going to play with the opacity and we're going to go down what I like to do, opacity is kind of like a feel, and we're going to play with it again when we do Catch Light 2. For now, I'm going to settle on for Catch Light 1, 60% opacity and 60% fill, and you're going to see why now. So we're going to go to Catch Light number 2. We're going to change the size of the brush. If we had 40 pixels before, let's go down to 24 pixels, a little more than half of the size of the original brush. So 24 pixels. Make sure you're on layer catch light two. That's important. Made that mistake many times. I'm on catch light two. This time, instead of being in the center of this one, I'm going a little bit closer to the pupil and to the edge. And I'm just gonna make a small circle within the circle. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Pull out to make sure that I have them even, relatively even. I see that. I see this one. This one is a little higher than this one, but I'm going to fix that with pass number two. Put your brush down. Make sure you're on capture two and just swirl. Just swirl it around. And I think I fixed. I did. I think I did. That looks pretty even to me. You can correct me in the comment. If you're liking this video, if you find you're learning, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll have more like this coming as I work sharing things with you. I'm working on competition prints now as we speak. All right. So the last task on catch light number two is you're going to do that very soft swirly touch again to make that soft edge. Just swirl around the whole circle and now you're going to pull out so that is catch light number two and you see why i changed the opacity of catch light number one and i had to see where catch light number two now i'm going to change the opacity of that and i if i go down to the same numbers let's say i go down to 60 and then uh, 60 percent on the fill as well and you can see how that softens the catch light i'm going to pull out further now doing two catch lights in the eye what that does is give that little bit of dimension to the catch light because the next step is moon one and moon two moon one and moon two are going to be a colored reflection of the catch light they go opposite but that's for video number three right now i think we're pretty much good on the catch lights for this image that's video number two. Again, you can always play with the opacity. Let's say you don't want to see that hard edge between catch light one and two. You can always play with the fill and opacity and get them to a point where I actually like it better when you can't see that there's two where it's more subtle, makes it softer, and just picks up the eyes. So that's part two. Please join me for part three, which is the moon. We get a, It's a little bit more complicated than the catch light, so this, why, this one's short. Doing catch lights freehand might be a little easier for me because I've been doing it for a very long time. For you, it might take some practice. Again, you always feel free to do it on one eye and clone it into the other one on the same layer. That's always fine too, like we did in video number one. So that's video number Number two. Hope to see you on video number three. Take care. Bye.